Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward, and I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land, and not there yet, but there is a land, which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Now we're going to look at the Sabbath of the land. We got a Sabbath of the people. Now we're going to look at a Sabbath of the land. The people were every seven days, a Saturday. We're going to look at the Sabbath of the land. It's every seven years, and then there's a 50th year. So here we go. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather the fruit thereof. Six years, do the work of the field. Farm. Prune. Plant. Sow. Reap. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. Now this is one of those things that God explains to Judah when they're taken captive by Babylon. They were not keeping this year, this uh, feast and this time of Sabbath of the land. And the, as the, the time that they're determined to be in Babylon is determined by how many years of the Sabbath they did not keep. A Sabbath for the Lord, thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. So in this seventh year, like the seventh day, there's no work at all when it comes to the land. Crops. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap. In the seventh year, the crops are going to come up. You're not going to reap them. Neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed. You don't dress it up. You just, it's going to produce grapes. You don't go out there with a farming tool. You don't go out there with, with uh, people, servants. You don't go out there with laborers. That man that went out, Jesus said he went out all day long looking for laborers for his vineyard. Not now. Not the seventh year. For it is a year of rest unto the land. America and the world don't practice that. And what's wrong with it? Now, we're not under the law, but, you know, if you want to be a nation and you want to have your land, you ought to read the Old Testament and look to the Old Testament. The land of America is overgrown, overbearing, and starving of nutrients for plants. And then on top of it, you can't grow plants on cement, concrete, and blacktop and stone. The Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you. It's going to be crops. You can enjoy those crops. But you're not going to make a commercial venture of gathering those crops. For thee and for thy servant, that's the one you're paying to work, and for thy maid and for the hired servants. So here's the people, the laborers. This time of the seventh year is for all the laborers and they're not going to labor the guy that has taken care of your crops for six years can go out there in the seventh sit underneath that tree and eat but you're not going to have him labor to pick it's a rest for thy stranger G uh, gentiles 
the law sets in for the for the Jews to have these Gentiles take part of the land. And Peter tells Cornelius, well, in the law, we're not supposed to have anything to do with you. Uh, Peter, there is room for strangers. And sojourn it with thee. Sojourn again, it's a temporary dwelling. This would be that man of Ethiopia. In Acts chapter 8. He can take part. He, he's a proselyte of the Jews. He, he's following the Jews' religion. And for thy cattle. You're not going to put the cattle to work. And for the beasts that are in are that are in thy land. Oxen are not going to plow. The asses are not going to carry a heavy burden. Shall all the increase thereof be meat. So let the animals go out in the field and enjoy the meal without working. It's a rest. Thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you, unto thee forty and nine years. All right now we're going to look at forty nine years. Fifty. Forty nine to fifty. So we got seventh day rest Sabbath. We've got the seventh year Sabbath. Now we're going to the forty nine and fiftieth year Sabbath. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee Jubilee, so the trumpet of Jubal, Jubilee, to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. On the day of the trumpet, in the fortieth ninth year, sound that trumpet, it's Jubilee. And remember, day of atonement is when that priest goes in there twice. No other time of the year does he go twice into the holy place, the most holy place, with an orphan for his sins and for the sins of the people. This is the yearly atonement in that seventh month. And when it comes to the 49th year, it's an extra special of Jubal. He shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Now, you see verse 10? Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. That's on the Liberty Bill, Liber Liberty Bell in Pennsylvania. And you're going to say our, our nation is not a Christian nation when they take from Jubal. They didn't quote the whole verse. Well, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven letter le words. How do you know they were a Christian nation? America was once. Because let me read you something. Verse ten: Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. You say you forgot something. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. That's what all modern Bibles say. They take out the all. It's funny how our nation took, of all the modern Bibles, they took what it said in the King James Bible and put it on that belt. It shall be a jubil, jubilee unto you. You shall return every man unto his possession. And you shall return every man unto his family. Now we're going to look at you give everything back. It's a releasing of credit. You have somebody and it belongs to somebody, you bring it back. We're going to look at servant too. We're going to look at servants. We're going to look at somebody who had to sell himself because he became poor. His jubil is a big economic revenue time for the nation of Israel. It's a time of release. And it's such a good time. It's called jubilee. 
And when people mention Jubilee, they don't know what they're talking about. So, a jubil, Jubilee show that 50th year be unto you. Now, here's the, the Jubilee is the 50th year unto you. You shall not sow again. No sowing. No work. Neither, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of all the vine undress. There's, there's no work. Here's another Sabbath. Sabbath of the land. Leave the crops alone. Far is commercialism. Everybody gets a, gets the time off. America is still dead. These days off and holidays come from the Bible. A holy day. For is a jubil, jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. So you still can eat it. You're just not going to go out there and labor for it. As far as business. As far as merchandise. The people of your house. I mean all the people of your house and your field. Your workers are going to go out in that field. And it's not for work. They're going to go out there and enjoy the meal. They're going to let the cows go out there. Let the, let the horses go out there. Let the asses go out there. And then feast. But the land is not going to be made bare by production. In the year of Jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. You got something that belongs to somebody? Give it back. You have moved out of your tribe or tribal land documented in the book of Joshua. It goes back to that tribe. We're going to look, you know, as far as uh, pledges and, and you have to give up the land for money. If thou shalt sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. Oppress is hardship, the load, the burden. You're not to put on the weight of the buyer or the seller that he cannot manage. Easy dealing, proper dealing, no swindling, no deceiving, no overboarding of price or hoarding. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according to the na number of years of the fruit, ye shall sell unto thee. It's just document how far that Jubilee is away and how far it has come. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof. And according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits, does he sell unto thee. Again, it's all date into that jubilee date. The further you can charge more, the lesser the date you can charge less. So you have to keep a calendar account of Israel. You have to keep track of the seven days. You have to keep track of the seven years. You got to keep track of the 49th and 50th year. He shall not therefore oppress one another. Again, hardship. But thou shalt fear thy God. I am the Lord your God. <laughs> yeah, shall fear thy God. I am the God. I am yours. You are mine, God said. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them that's the salvation of works what's the salvation of works statutes and judgments and law you got to do them everything we're reading in Exodus everything we're reading in Deuteronomy everything we read in Leviticus everything we read in Numbers you got to do it and if you don't there's no salvation Today we are under the grace and under the merits of Jesus Christ without works. And you'll see in the, in the book of Acts, the Gentiles can say, Oh, you've got to be circumcised. That's a work. you got to do it. And ye shall dwell in the land safely. Okay. Doing works for salvation gets you in the land. 
It doesn't get you to heaven. There is no heaven for the Jews. It's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Israel, the land grant. In Revelation 20, 21, and 22, there is a new earth. That's given to Abraham and descendants under the law. That's their heaven. We get New Jerusalem. We get a city. The Jews get a land grant. Without the United Nations. Without the enemies being around them. If he shall say. Because even the Bible says. Honor thy mother and father. That, they, that, that, thou days, that thy days might be prolonged. In the land. Now when Paul quotes that in Ephesians. He takes off in the land. Because that's not the church. Everything's about that land. The land shall yield her fruit. You shall eat your fill and dwell there in safety if you keep the commandments. Now, how do you know that's true? When they fail God in Jeremiah and Ezekiel's time, they're not in the land and they're not eating the fruits of the, of the land. In Daniel chapter 1, the king of Babylon is trying to change their diet. And Daniel's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. So he says, give us pulse to eat. Give us beans. How do you know beans is the diet of the Jews? Look at, look at Jacob. Esau saw his birthright out for beans. So safety in the land, that's what they want. They want the promise of the land. They want the milk and the honey of the land. And that's proper because that's what God gave them. But they never did right. Even in, in Joshua's time, they did not get out the enemy. They kept them. They married with them. And if ye shall say, what shall we eat in the seventh year? If we can't pick crops, we can't reap, what are we going to eat? Behold, we shall not sow. We can't sow it around. Nor gather in our increase. Lord, if we can't farm, what are we going to eat? Good, proper question. Then I, God, will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year. And it shall bring forth fruit for three years. The sixth year, the seventh year, and the eighth year. God says, I am going to triple. In the sixth year, I'm going to triple your crops. You don't have to worry about the seventh year. When you come to the end of the seventh year, you don't have to worry about that. I'll take care of you through the eighth year. You shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of the old fruit unto the ninth year. So three years of blessing in the sixth year. If you do what God tells you to do, I'll take care of you. So when you start planting and you start putting the seed in the ground in the eighth year, I'll take care of you to the ninth year by the sixth year of crops. Until her fruit come in, you shall eat of the old store. And that's what happened when Israel came into the land. They are eating of the store of the land. The manna seeds. So that's a wonder. That's a sign. That's to Israel. When that year, the sixth year comes up, you're going to notice that your harvest has been tripled. The land shall not be sold forever. It's been sold off and on. For the land is mine. Take that to the United Nations. Take that to the Arabians. Take that to the presidency of the United States. Take that to England and the Queen. Take that to Russia. Take that to the Pope on the rope in, in uh, Italy. God said that's my land. It belongs to the Jew. And he told the Jew, you better not sell it. The land is mine. Documented in the King James 1611 Bible. Leviticus 25, 23. That land belongs. And then we sing a stupid song in America. This land is my land. This land is. Yeah, go ahead. But there's only one land that God claims as his own in his word. And that's Palestine. God's like, you can have that sin cursed land of America. Go ahead, take it. Ain't worth nothing to me. See the signing sheet. 
Uh, excuse me, people. See the sign you see? It's an ocean in another ocean. You don't even know what an ocean is. You don't even know what a sea is. For ye are strangers. Now here's where God says they're strangers. That's God's land. And he's given to them. And they're not there yet. That's why they're strangers. You know, none of these people we're talking about, including Moses, has never set foot in that land. Including Joshua, up until now. Right now, they're strangers. They've never been there. Abraham's been there. Isaac's been there. Jacob's been there. But not the children of Israel we're talking about. And realize, even before you get to that land, you're strangers. That's my land. And when you do get there, you got there because of me. That's what God is saying. And sojourners with me. And all the land of your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. Buy it back. You're going, to, you're going to get into troubles. You're going to have to sell your land, uh, pawn your land, pawn things. They're, they're, Jesus said you're going to always have the poor with you. You'll be having poor according to Leviticus 25. You're going to have to give something to somebody so you can get something so you can pay your bills. But in the time of Jubilee, you got to give it back. Give it to back to them. Erase that credit. If thy brother be waxen poor and has sold away some of his possession, pawning, his pawning, he's brought his jewelry, he's even brought his land. I believe it's either Ezekiel, uh, Ezra or Nehemiah. They come to the, to the room and say, listen, we've had to pawn our, our lands so we can make payments. And if any of his kin, family, come in, redeem it. Uncle comes in and says, hey, listen, my uncle, my cousin, whatever the relationship, his brother comes in. He says, my brother sold this. He needed the money. I've got the money. I want to redeem it back. I want to buy it back. Now, that's us. You are seeing Jesus Christ. We have mortgaged our lives to Satan beyond what we ever can pay back. And Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again to redeem us, to buy us back to God. Then shall he redeem that which his brother sold and give it back to his brother. And if the man have none to redeem it, there's no one he, he can rely on. And himself be able to redeem it. Then let him count the years of the sale thereof. And restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. Now here's something. He's able to buy back what he bought. You're going to count the days to the jubilee. And whatever the time and whatever the amount of money needed to be due to the jubilee, from the jubilee, there's the price thereof. So there's no making up a price out of your head. There's no exacting or uh, uh, interest far beyond what a person can pay today, what they interest you at. God says, I've set the standard. And the standard is that jubilee. You can redeem it. Okay, he's going to give it back to you. When you pay the price, what's the price? It's according to the jubilee. That's what it is. The jubilee is to be, I'm happy, I'm grateful to God because I'm not under this burden no more. America's got his people under burdens of interest rates. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that has bought it unto the year of jubilee. He can't buy it. Again, let's say he brings a necklace. And he gets a certain amount of money for that necklace. Whatever bills he owes. He cannot buy that necklace back. And in the jubilee it shall go out. And he shall return unto his possession. That poor person. Walks up to the person that he gave the money. He says here's, here's your jewelry back. And that guy is pleased and happy. It's part of his family. And if it's land, I have to sell a piece of land. We're going to get in that next verses. 
I owe a debt. I got to sell some of my land. Well, according to the scripture, that land, if it's your father's, it's supposed to remain in your father's. And he's already told you, you can't sell that land. Well, if you come in debt, God is going to return that land back to your the fathers of your tribe. And if a man sell a dwelling house, right? You live in a house, in a walled city. That's where the government's trying to get us now, in the walled cities. Then he may redeem it within a whole year after it's sold. Within the full year, may he redeem it. Okay, now here's, here's, a, here's a weird thing right here that you don't see. Okay, you sell your house. Your house is in a walled city. There's walls around your city. You sell your house to the person. All right. I forget how many years there are, how many days there are in a lunar month, a year. 30 times 12 is 420 years, days. You sell, uh, let's say you sell that house on the third month of the year. Ninth, tenth, eleventh month. You say, you know what? I want to buy that back. You got the money. You go up to that guy and say, listen, you know what? I want to buy that house back. It's mine. It belongs to my father's. That guy is obligated to sell you that house back. In a city that has walls. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the wall city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the jubilee. So you sell that house in the wall. And it's one day after the year that you bought you bought it. I forget how many days. Then it's yours. It's yours forever. It's counted to you and your family for your children. If it's in a walled city. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. Fields. They may be redeemed and they shall go out in the Jubilee. So here is houses that are not in a walled city. You sold that house. In the Jubilee it goes back to you and your family. Because it belonged to your father's. And your fathers would be traced back to the tribe of the area, the tribe that belongs in that land. Now, King Asa had that problem with Naboth. I want your garden. Naboth was 100% right. I can't give you this garden because it's my father's. Now, had Naboth sold him that, that property, according to the law, at the Jubilee, the king wouldn't own it anymore. It would go back to Naboth. But David says, listen, I can't sell it to you because the law says it belongs to my father. And his father. And his father. So, not like American uh, properties. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites. Here's anything to the Levites, the cities. 48 of them. And the houses of the cities of their possession made the Levites redeem at any time. A Levite sells his, his property, his house, got in debt, whatever it is. At any time he has the money to buy back that house, I don't care if it's the next day, I don't care if it's 49 years. And Levite walks back and says, here's the money I paid for the house. I want it back. It's his. Now there are 48 cities given to the Levites of the children of the tribe of Israel. The eleven tribes. If a man purchase of a Levites, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee. So you buy of a Levite, you buy of a possession of this house. Jubilee comes, it goes back to the Levite. There are some countries that do this, you know. At the end of a certain amount of years, they say, you know what? Everybody who has a debt, it's clean, it's wiped off. We start the country fresh. I believe one of them's in South America. In the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee, for the houses of the cities of the Levites are the possessions among the children. It belongs to the Levites, 
not you. And it's taken for granted that non Levite is brought that land. Not yours. Give it back. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. So here's a point the guy can't sell his land. The Levite land. That's it. No. You're going to have to do something else to get money. If thy brother be waxen poor and falleth in decay, he's not only poor, but man, he, that's it. Everything's gone. His clothes are battered, ripped. With thee. With thee means in your, in the land that you're in, in your neighborhood, in your city. That thou shalt relieve him Yea, thou, though he be a stranger, and this would be the family, he may not be of your tribe. He may not be of your family. He may, we read in Judges where a Levite left his land of possession and went and settled somewhere else. And he settled in Micah's house. And then it went sour from there. Sojourn, a temporary dweller, that he may live with thee. So this guy has totally busted, broken, done. He comes to you for help. Now I gotta add a little clause before we go any further about poor people. The Bible does not expect you to be a fool. I am not telling you to go out and help everyone that says they're poor. Now here in Daytona Beach, we have seen, I don't know if it's the same guy, but we have seen two places where someone has held a sign saying, I want money for beer. That guy is a lazy bum and does not deserve no money. Now there are people who say I'm homeless, I'm a vet, I got accident, all this. And you're not to go up and say, okay, here's my money, here's my money. Because they may go buy dope, they may go buy sex, they may go buy beer, they go make just use that money foolishly. Especially in a place like Las Vegas or Atlantic City. They just go throw it into one armed bandits. And what you do is if they're like, okay, I need food. Look around you. Is there a convenience store, a, a fast food restaurant, a, a little chicken joint, something like that? Say, sir, there's a little chicken joint over there. I will take you in there. I will buy you a number one and number two meal. There's a convenience store over there. I will get you a bottle of pop. Couple donuts, and maybe wonder if they have any kind of sandwich, something like that. I will buy you a meal, I'll buy you a dessert, and I'll buy you a drink. I've done this like four times in my life, and I've only had two people ever take me up on the offer. Maybe three. Maybe three. One guy was all pleased and took gospel tracks and were reading when I left. I've had other people, oh, whoa, 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 they had the nerve the next night to, they were on my route. They come up to me and try to get me with money again. You got to do it properly. You got to find out they really need help. Another thing is, my wife does sometimes, is she'll have a, a bag in the car. It's got food in it. Canned goods, stuff that won't perish and all that. And they'll come up to her and say, oh, we do have money. She hands them a, a bag. We've seen one guy one time. He was given fruit, and when that person walked away, he took that fruit and just threw it on the ground. You gotta be careful with poor people. You gotta see if they're really poor. There are plenty of people out there who is taking panhandling. They take it to a non-IRS claim of income. Be careful. So here's a man that God says he's poor and he, he's broken. He's come to you. Take thou no usury, interest, or collateral of him, or increase. Don't make money of him. But fear thy God that thy brother may live with thee. Help him. Guide him. Use that occupation in your house to strengthen him. If he got poor because he was stupid and didn't know, show him how to do a checkbook. 
help him in his fall so he can rise up and maybe be able to help somebody else one day. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury. He wants money. All right, I'll give you twenty dollars, but you're going to have to pay me thirty-five when you're done. That's no, no. Nor lend him thy vict victuals for increase. Here's two two cans of corn. I want ten dollars for that. No, you give it to him. I am the Lord your God. Oh, look at God stepping in there. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. Remember where you came from? To give you the land of Canaan to be your God. I gave you this land. I gave you that house. You are going to have the nerve to take and swindle that guy who I had. God says I made the poor people. I made the rich and the poor. Proverbs. And you're going to have the nerve to, that everything I gave you is because of me. And you're going to swindle that guy? And Lord's take it for granted. This guy is truly whatever has happened in his life, he has fallen. He's a Jew. And he needs help. How about if you've got a Christian in church has fallen for whatever thing? Is he getting help from the church? Is he getting help from the people? Or they shut the door or they made it impossible for him to get help? Again, you got to use your senses. you got to make sure he's truly has had a broken down then. I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, giving you the land of Cana to be your God. Look what God's giving you. This guy's just asking just to get out of the trouble he's in. If that brother, do you know another story in the Bible like this that the guy did not do what God told him to do right here? I'll give you a clue. He ended up in hell. The rich man who had Lazarus, who was eating, who was eating the garbage, and the dogs were licking it. He didn't take care of Lazarus at all. And it looks like, and I'm going to assume for a moment, and I don't know. But let's say Lazarus was in the poor condition he was because of medical, the sores. You know Lazarus, if he had those sores like that, he was unclean. He was unable to work because no one could touch him. And if he touched the goods, no one could touch those goods. They would be unclean. So Lazarus would be in a condition that he cannot do nothing. He has been broken. He has been decayed. And he has not received no help of that rich man. You know there were lepers in Israel, remember, outside the camp, unclean, unclean. How did they eat? Somebody had to bring them food. In Acts, is it four? It's early in Acts. John and Peter are going to the temple, and here's a man that's at the temple, and he's begging because he can never walk. He can't work. And he's not rebuked for being a panhandler. Peter looks at him, he's like, oh, good, you're going to give me some money. He's like, oh, no, no, I'm going I'm to make you walk in the name of Jesus. He didn't rebuke the guy for being a panhandler. He needed a panhandle because there's no other thing he could do in Israel. Didn't have wheelchairs. They didn't have the laws about uh, uh, people who were injured like that. There was no workers' compensation. There are people who are in Israel, there are people around the whole world, definitely need your help. But God says, don't be a fool, because some of them are swindlers. And the funny thing about it, and I don't mean ha-ha funny, is when you read Hebrews, the Bible says something quite weird. Whereby he entertains angels unaware. God may send an angel down and say, I just want to see what he's going to do. Get dressed up, act like you're poor on that, and ask for money. Now, I think you could send just by, you know, somebody, well, give me money. Okay, here, some money. I think you could send like that because you did not test it. You did not diligently search if that person really needs money. But if there's somebody who really does need and you don't give, we're going to see things like that in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. God gets angry. And I believe Proverbs speaks about that. 
if thy brother, this would be a Jew, that dwelleth by thee, he's your neighbor, down the street, across the way. Now, neighbor, I, when I was first young and I, in, the, in the Lord, and I'd read the Bible, I'd say, neighbor, I thought the guy next door. In the Bible, it's not only the guy next door, it could be the guy down the street. He could be the guy that's in the land of Dan that you're in. He could be the guy that's in the land of Judea that you live in. He could be the guy that's in the land of Ephraim that you live in. He could be the guy that, for the Jews I'm talking about. and for, He could be a guy in Daytona Beach. He could be a guy that down the end of the road. He could be a guy that's all the way across on Daytona Beach for me. When it means neighbor, because someone out there probably thinks as dumb as I was thinking, it means your next door neighbor. So, that dwelleth by thee, the waxen poor, and be sold unto thee. Thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. All right. First guy, he comes to you. Oh, will you can you take me in and help me? Sure. Now, I'm going to advise you today, in this day and age, I'm going to advise you not to do something like that. Take somebody in your house, unless you really, really know. You need to exercise discernment today of picking up somebody inside the road or bringing somebody into your house. There's a lot of nutcases out there. Now, I was never one to pick up uh, hitchhikers. Never. Maybe a couple of them. I know people who did, and God bless them. But we're in such a day today that, uh, you know, you got to really discern. But here's a guy, he's come to you, and he says, I am dead. I am broke. I am worse than broke. I will come into your house. I will labor for you if you help me out. So in other words... The first guy is, I'm going to live with you. Help me, please. The second guy, I'm going to come live with you. I will work for you. Let's say the guy has a vineyard. I will work in your vineyards if, you, if you'll help me for our wages. I will work. And there are some people out there with a sign that will say, Hey, I will mow your lawn if you give me 20 bucks. And there are people out there you ask, Well, okay, I'll give you money, but if you come over to my house, i got something on the roof. I'm not going to do that. So, he's whacking more, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. He's not your slave. That's what the Bible says. That's what a bondservant is. It's a slave. And you know what a slave is? A slave is someone who is not paid for their wages. So, in other words, what the Bible is saying about this guy is, all right, you're going to give him what he needs to help him out. Let's say he needs $1,000. You're going to give him $1,000 or $1,000, whatever you owe. And he's going to do work for you. Pay him his wages that he's working for you too. Outside the $1,000. And come to agreement out of his wages. You take out a certain amount to the 1000 But he's not going to work in your fields for nothing. That's what it's saying. But as a hired servant, be paid. And as a sojourner, somebody's going to pass through. It's like a guy comes to a hotel. Checks in, he's going to check out. He's not staying at that hotel. He's not going to live at that hotel. He shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. If he stays that long to Jubilee, he goes. And you pay him. And the debt is forgiven. And then he, shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and dwell and shall return unto his own family. And unto his own possession of his fathers shall he return. Now 21.3. I think it's 21.3 Leviticus. Here's a servant. Here's a man that's a slave. 21.3. That's not it. Well, the worst I've, the part of the Vegas I'm looking at is where the servant says, okay, it's time for you to go. And the, and the master gave him a wife and children. 
And he says, well, I love my wife, I love my children, I love my master. I'm going to stay, and it, that's what they bored a hole in his ear. Here's a guy, he's, he's of the brethren. It's time for him to go. Thank you very much for helping me, I'm going. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, Jewish people, the Jews. Ye shall not be sold as bondmen. Don't you dare sell them as slaves. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor. Force him to labor. Hardship. Like the Egyptians did. The Egyptians had slaves and they were the Jews. And God reminds them, remember how it was for you? Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear thy God. Fear thy God. Don't mistreat the guy. He's your brother. Both thy bondman and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen. Oh. Are you going to have slaves? Let them be the heathen. Gentiles. Ooh. That's a bad one, isn't it? That's a bad word today. Jews were... Are, were allowed to have slaves they were not to be Jews they were to be the heathen they are round about you of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids look at God's thing you can buy a slave only of the Gentiles but you have to treat them right you're not to abuse them not to serve them with rigor moreover the children of the strangers Gentiles that do sojourn among you they want to be right. They want the God of, of the Hebrews. They want to be of the Hebrews. Of them shall ye buy slaves. And of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession, ownership of men and women. Treated right. Because God said to treat them right. That's the law of God. That's the difference between American slave owners and God people having slave owners. And there were many American slave owners that did their, did their slaves justice and righteousness and brought them to Jesus and brought them to the God of the Bible and brought them to the white man church. You shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you. You can pass on your, your Gentile slaves to your children. To inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. Ooh, unless they can buy themselves back. But over your brethren the Jews, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule over them another with rigor. You pay them. They become your employees, not your servants. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, now we're on the other side of the scale. Here comes a here comes a, a Gentile and he's rich. And thy brother, the Jew, that dwelleth by him, wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger, or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, he, uh, heathen. After that he is sold, he may redeem again. One of his brethren shall redeem. You walk up to the, to the uh, stranger, the Gentile, the heathen, say, I want to buy that guy back. And God's taking for granted that that stranger is going to sell him back. You figure that stranger is coming to land to do right. And the Hebrews come to the Gentiles and say, that's humbling. That's very humbling for a Jew to walk up to a Gentile and say, uh, can you take care of me? And for the family to come to the Gentile and say, we want to buy him back. Look at Jonah and look at Peter. Peter argued with God. Jonah argued with God about going to Gentiles. After that he is sold that he may redeem again, one of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him. And any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him. Or if he be above able, he may redeem himself. If he's got the money, if somebody in his family has got the money, he can be redeemed. Buy back. That's me. I became property of Satan. 
I could never do anything to buy myself back to God. I'm without hope, without God, a Gentile going to hell. Jesus said, I'll pay that price. I said, I came to God. I said, God, I want to be, I don't want to work under Satan. I don't want to go to hell. I want to do right. I want to be, I want you, God, to take me back. And God says, through Jesus Christ, I'll take you back. I said, I'll take it. What's it going to cost me, Lord? It ain't going to cost you nothing. He'll pay the price back. You just got to put your faith and, and belief on that. That blood is the blood able to, to purchase you. That blood can purchase me, God. And Jesus Christ bought me back, redeemed me out of Satan's hands, and brought me home to God. Read about me. Read about my relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him of the year of the Jubilee. Again, the Jubilee is that period. And the price of his sales shall be according unto the number of years. According to the time of the hired servant shall it be with him. So the standard is that Jubilee. The further the Jubilee is, the more it's going to be. If there be yet many years behind. According unto them, he shall give again the price of redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years, less days under the year Jubilee, then he shall count with him together. And according unto the, his years, shall he give him again the price of redemption. And as a yearly hired servant shall he be with him, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. You're going to treat him right. And if he be not able to redeem in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. He can never pay it back. No one's able to pay it back. Jubilee, he and his family are set free. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They belong to God. You better treat a Jew right if you if he is under your hands. You better treat him better than right. Because I will curse them that curse you. And I will bless them that bless you. Joseph was a blessing to Potiphar's house. Joseph was a blessing to the prisoner in the jail because he treated the Jew right. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. 